Yeah, similarly, the tank Rengar that was bust out by Rain over the course of uh, All-Star event would synergize very well. Golden Glue does want to pick up the Orianna. And Syndra's just a ban that Samsung will always do on Blue because Crown is not confident in his Syndra. Spent a lot of time playing games on it. You could see in his NA solo queue account when they're at Worlds. But they very often are forced to ban picks like Syndra on blue side. With the LeBlanc taken away, there will still be quite a lot mid lane available. Samsung yeah. have always been a rise team. They used to flex it to top quite a lot, not so much a top pick anymore. We're heavily expecting this to be mid lane rise. But this is not necessarily a big deal for TL, because TL has played multiple games since that first loss, where they've just left up rise, and it's gone straight through picks and bans. Of course, Golden Blue has since proven himself on the Casio of counter pick. We saw Knight bust out in their first game as well. Now, you have your first rotation, of course, Rise on the opposite side. What do you prioritize here? Do you take the mid lane counter pick immediately? What do you need to grab? It, it really depends on what they think is important. I don't know the exact perceived tier list from Rain over side. He's obviously happy to play Olaf, so like letting Rek'Sai or Lee Sin get played and then just taking Olaf or the other one regardless doesn't really matter. Last series yesterday against Giants, Team Nickel were first picking Rek'Sai as their number one priority jungler. So I think they're going to take it. Yeah. yeah, there is. It's also, of course always been a Rain over special. And the two first picks that Team Liquid have made have been Nautilus and Rek'Sai. Flex the pick Nautilus tournament, and the Rek'Sai is their highest priority jungler. Ambition will definitely opt into Lee Sin. And the thing is, so far in this draft, no one's unhappy about what they've got or what they've given over. Very, very predictable first four picks. We're waiting for the first curveball. This is basically these two teams' MO so far this tournament. Especially because all the bans have really been target bans, essentially. It's like, well, your pocket Talia is gone, and no one gets LeBlanc anyway, and no one gets Syndra anyway, for the most part. I know some have let it through, but by and large, the champions ban frequently. So you just kind of had that sort of floating ether sort of area at the top banned away per roll, and everything else is just available. All the tanks are up, no big deal here. The question is, is Piglet really going to feel good playing Vayne into what looks like another sort of difficult bot lane mashup? Now, when he played it against Giants, he survived Ash Zyra, and it went okay, but his mid-game team fights were much worse. I think Rise is good against Vayne. Rune Prison is a great skill, so switches over to the Jin. I think it's a very smart choice. Yeah, the laning strength, I think, is so important. He's tried to play around with the Vayne. Sure, they won a game, but it was struggling for the first 30 minutes. The investment into the Vayne was not necessary. And if you're going to take Vayne, realistically, it should be a last pick. So it's going to go for the much safer Jin. Action onto Samsung, looking for an AD carry and ostensibly a mid laner. But there's certainly a flex nature about some of these picks. So we're going to have to wait to see exactly where Karma and Ryze are going. Well, additionally, looking at the opposite side, Nautilus, you mentioned at the start of the draft, is a flex pick. Do you think we're just going to see the Zyra last pick coming in here for Team Liquid? You know what I'm certain about? We're going to see a Maokai. Three games, three games of Maokai. Samsung prioritized Maokai over Poppy and Nautilus. It's actually, not pop it was not actually a pop popular decision right. on the world scale. People feel like it's Maokai's one tier below. But Cubes looks so comfortable on it, so why not? So what's interesting as well is in the first day, we had only seen Maokai and Poppy. We see no, we almost saw no Nautilus at all in the very first day. And of course, you've got Liquid here on this side who are first picking it very frequently. So everyone's got their own ideas about what is good. Yes, the Maokai's locked in. No crazy flexes after all. That's going to be Rise mid, of course. And the Ezreal just lets him be safe. And the nice thing is it allows him to outrange the Cassiopeia. And it means that Ruler has very good uptime against a very threatening, or what would otherwise be threatening mid lane mage. Zyra, I think, an easy lock in as well and yeah as you were mentioning much earlier every team got a lot of champions they're really happy to play for here it's everyone's a or s tier champions are locked in and it's just two generically strong team comps well i'm curious where do you think these team comps are going to be strong how are they going to interact and what objectives are these guys going to play to uh coming into the early game into the mid game what do we expect i think playmaking Outside of the bot lane is much better on Samsung. I think Maokai's CD flanks are better. Lee Sin's ganks are generally speaking a little bit better just because the mansion's so good. And Crown is a point and click route. Those are all great. Liquid, though, can have Piglet set things up, and their bot lane should look very good, should have push pressure. And a lot of late game on the side of Samsung, double tier between the Ezreal and the Rise, and also Maokai being the strongest tank of the three we talked about in the very late game. So late game, I think, looks pretty damn comfortable for Samsung, but we're going to have to see if Team Liquid can make something happen before that period. Have to see how game one unfolds in this best of three, but we're going to get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. Game one coming up right after this.
we are in the game, ladies and gentlemen, for semi-final set one between Samsung and Team Liquid. My name is Pulse, and I will be joined by the best moose in EU. It is Martin DeFisio Longa. How are you today, sir? I am doing pretty well. I uh, enjoyed the analyst segment, and uh, Sifa, the rookie, not understanding when to stop talking. Yep. Got to follow <laughs> music cues. You have a little bit of extra time here. But into the game, Pulse, we obviously didn't get to do the pick and ban phase. Indeed. Uh, uh, I would like to get your thoughts on this because we have very generic tank top laners yeah. followed by top tier jungle picks, followed by mages mid and then the bot lanes. So as they were saying on the analyst desk, generically strong compositions. Yes, I feel like uh, we have seen all these picks quite a lot in this tournament. Maybe Rise is the only exception we've only seen like a few times and actually not been very successful. But Crown hasn't gotten to play it yet. I think we're going to see a much stronger rise performance here. And I think really the only takeaway now that it is very standard picks is the fact that like Team Liquid is running this like low mobility, super strong AOE team fighting comp where Samsung is running their very mobile composition where they can skirmish much better. They can create picks with like Rise with Lee Sin together. Like that combination is strong. A room prison into a kick from Lee Sin. It's very hard to deal with. For champions like Cassio here, Jin, Zyra, again the low mobility ones with no dashes. So I think that that's the only little difference I see here. Both of them actually have good overall team fights, but it's AOE team fights versus like more catch potential on Sam. I mean, overall, it seemed like pretty much everyone got to pick exactly what they wanted uh, in this draft. Everyone has picks that they're comfortable with. You take a look at, like, Golden Glue as well. He's been proven on this champion, so he'll be fine with that in the mid lane. Taking a uh, look at towards the bottom lane, though, Pick Lift didn't go for the Vayne this time. Wasn't ah, he was hovering it. I mean, he was very confident in the uh, in the intro video. Of course, Rainover had a lot of praise, very confident in his bot laner. Going to be looking towards mid lane, though. Well, Golden Glue following after. Lots of damage onto Crown so far. Rainover. And to get in range there for the knockup, didn't quite find it. Ambition, Q goes wide, and that'll be the end of the hostilities in mid lane. A yeah, good first gank here from Reno, but sadly for him, only getting a ghost. One of the very good things by running that summoner in the mid lane is when you see the jungler, you pop the ghost, and if you need to, you can then use flash, but otherwise, save it. And I really want to look at this bot lane from Team Liquid because rewatching the games from yesterday, uh, Matt and Piglet had. Some games where they were dominating, mainly against Dark Passage in the 2v2s, and Dark Passage really did not show up and wanted to play at all. But against Giants, we actually saw the Team Liquid bot lane struggle in some of these games, especially Matt could get caught out when he wasn't playing Thresh. He's obviously not playing it in this game, he's playing the Zyra, so I want to see how his performance is, because they have a strong 2v2 lane down here, and these guys have to perform. They need to get picked up in a carry position. <laughs> Ambition. He's saying hello. He's, he's not going to give a love tap to Lolo. You're not going to kill a Nautilus at this stage of the game. Really. However, Crown in the mid lane, lots of damage onto Golden Glue, no ignite though, so not going to be the kill, but we'll shove him out of lane. Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, mid lane matchup, where basically if Cassiopeia ever misses Q, she will lose the trade and Ryze will just go aggressive instantly. If Cassiopeia hits the Q, Ryze actually wants to kind of step away and not take the trade because he will end up taking so much damage in return. Mainly also because Cassiopeia can move in and out of the minion waves and dodge the overloads. So it really depends on Golden Glow and how he lands that poison. If he connects it, go for the trade. If not, just back away, don't risk it because Ryze will then go aggressive. So it's both kind of the machine gun mages facing each other. All depends. Does that trade change after level 4 when Cassiope gets Miasma? Because then she usually uses Miasma for the initiator for that trade. It definitely makes it easier for Cassiope to enable the trade. And then another one is level 6, yep. where Ryze doesn't have an ulti you need to fear in lane in an all-in. It's pretty useless all-in ulti. But Cassiope obviously has this insane stun if you do manage to hit it. And we actually saw yesterday Knight dying in the 1v1 against Golden Blue because Knight on this rise got stunned. Yeah. He got hit by too many poisons and he lost the trade. And you also have to face Cassiopeia when you're comboing. So unless you stop midway through your combo, it's a game of chicken yep. and Cassiopeia finds you. It's all the mind games in that mid lane. So we will definitely see a lot of trades between Crown and Golden Blue. Top lane as well. Yes, we've seen the, the boring 1v1s, but we've actually also seen people getting Pretty like uh, frequently solo kills up there, I'm, and I don't know if that's because the top laners are misplaying, or if these tanks actually just have slightly more kill pressure than maybe we're used to. I mean, there definitely was a skill disparity yesterday when we were seeing Lolo on that Northless up against Kuve. Uh, see this gank from mid lane though. Rainover is waiting in the wings on top of Crown, who is himself on top of a ward, but there are minions there as well. Golden Glue. Trying to find the opportunity to come in here. Here comes Rain over with the tunnel, but instantly snared up. Another flash will knock up Crown, and there's no out right now because Miasma's on the ground. Crown goes down for first blood. Yeah, really nice gank by Liquid here, and disrespect from Crown. 
he knows that if my aspect comes down, he cannot flash. So by him staying and actually trying to just stop Raynova from engaging and walking out, he gave Raynova the chance to flash on him. And of course, Raynova, a very good jungler, is going to take that easy, easy opportunity, flash onto him. Great follow up by Golden Blue. Didn't even have to use flash. And then Crown goes down. So definitely some disrespect from the Korean mid laner. And Raynova and Golden Blue instantly punishes. And that's important because Crown had already gotten a very good first back where he got tier. Golden Blue didn't have a recall yet. And it was actually slightly down in CS. But now Golden Blue, well, he said, I'm getting a free kill here, I can go back, I can even get some extra AP, and now suddenly, Castle is in a good spot. Yep. Just takes one kill, one gank to change the flow of the mid lane, the Evian flow. Uh, mid lane, Piglet and Matt still farming away, pretty much even CS. Uh, both AD carries got their optimal back time as Piglet got his BF sword, so 1,300 gold on that one. Yeah, and we see something, uh, oh, actually a trade. Whoa, Whoa, lots of damage in from Core JJ and his Mantra Q. Piglet returning fire, has that fourth shot ready to go, trying to get in range for that one, but it will be thrown on that minion for a big crit. Ruler very confident in his side stepping. He knows he jumps in and instantly steps to the left when the Root comes out from Zyra. If Matt does connect that one, Ruler can actually end up dying very quickly against this double CC lane with an offensive summoner. Top lane trading, again, we've seen it before. Nothing yep. is really going to happen, but we also see that Sheen rush on Ezreal. If you get enough gold in your first back and you're against, like, especially a BF user, just saying, I'm gonna skip tier, it makes me too weak for the early game. I have to just go straight for Sheen and delay my later power spike by like a minute or two. But it's gonna make my laning place much better. It's a trade-off a lot of Ezreal players are taking right now. I think it's smart. And we also see why, you know, Ruler felt like he could go aggressive because he knew he had a bit of extra damage compared to normal. And Ambition is now in the bottom lane. Finds the Q onto Piglet. This may be a death sentence for him. Will he follow up the question on this? Rather Teleport. The will be no. That's a flash that kick into the wall. Piglet taken out by Ambition alone. Ruler flashing away. Matt and Lolo defending the tower. Kube looking for the opportunity to jump onto Matt. Because Cool J is there to follow up. Lolo, the flash, the smackdown, the kill and return. A one for two trade. Advantage, Samsung. Yeah, really nice setup here by Ambition. Golden Blue is sadly not going to find anyone. Ruler has already recalled and now Ambition as well. So Golden Blue, he had two doors he could enter, technically three, I guess, and he yep. picked the wrong the one, sadly for him. A little bit too slow. But really good setup for Ambition. He knows, go all in, keep them there. Don't allow Piglet and Matt to flash away. So he just literally flash kicks onto the gin. So it's like, you're staying right here. My top lane is coming. Really nice setup. And, and Samsung is showing, you know, what we expect from them. The coordinated plays are top notch because these are the same guys who made the world final. No changes. Yes, maybe they're not 100% mechanically because it's the off season, but the shot calling is there. I just love this play from Ambition. He knows Piglet can try and flash away, and that's why he just goes super aggressive and keeps him in place, takes him down. Ruler even going a little bit aggro there, and sadly again for Golden Blue, if you guys look at your minimap, he's on the way to try and pick up a few kills in return after Lolo also takes down map but is not there in time. So I actually couldn't have made any other decision. He just literally couldn't get there in time, and he tried. Cool JJ continuing to put a lot of pressure onto Piglet in the bottom lane. Constant Q's a landing. Banana takes out the back line of minions there from Ruler. It was just a warning shot. 3,000, or rather 300 gold advantage to Samsung so far in this game. Not the biggest in the world, but also not, not something you don't have to write home about. Exactly, and, and we see right here why the bot lane 2v2 is so important because if one bot lane has the advantage and can push, you can enable these dives. And it's sometimes much easier actually setting up a tower dive where you know the enemy bot lane is stuck on the tower compared to like a gank where there might be a chance you're getting counter ganked, you might not have vision in the enemy jungle before you do it. But because Ruler and Core JJ had the control and were pushing in Team Liquid's bot lane, they could go for that set, that dive setup and they could execute it really, really well. Raynova will steal away a Cloud Drake. It is actually not spotted by this ward. Just on the wrong side of the little pixel brush. And he just get the vision from Ambition and the rest of Samsa. But an issue, obviously, the fact that Ruler is doing so well on CS on this Ezreal. We know how strong he's going to be in two items. Not the end of the world, though, from Team Liquid, and they're going all in. Very nice follow-up there. Here comes the curtain call. Reyna with the flash, the knock-up, and the fourth shot will come down. Fine call, JJ, almost for the second kill. Ambition blocking up the dancing grenade, bouncing to the minions and not to Core JJ. So Piglet, happy that he found one there, and Ambition defending the tower with the help of Core JJ from long range. 
and Ku uh, Golden Blue thinking about going down, but I think he's clearing out control ward currently. So just a nice kill over to Team Liquid. Yeah, and I love how active the junglers are here in the early game, and they're not afraid of making these aggressive plays on their turrets. They know they have the damage to take down people. It's all about tracking the enemy jungler, and when he's on one side of the map, you make that aggressive play. This time for Liquid, though, sadly, Ambition was nearby and comes in and it makes it a one for one. Very even in gold still. See, we have a uh, bait basically from Crown with the ulti saying, yeah. ah, I might appear here. Zyke. Or maybe not. Lolo will find Kuve with the Q. Yeah. Charge onto two, rain over into the top. It's lane. Golden Blue. So much damage onto Maokai. And Golden Blue does have the timing on this one this time around. Lands the Q, lands the ult for the stun. Lolo with the follow up. Once Nautilus gets on top of you, there's no getting away. Two kills to Team Liquid. Yeah, and I love the reactions here from Team Liquid. They know Samsung are trying to force plays in the side lanes, but Golden Blue is following. He's not just staying mid lane, he's roaming with Crown. Crown was trying to like fake his ulti for some sort of engage and then. End up staying for way too long, and good reaction by Reynum and Golden Blue to take down two members from Samsung, and it's been a good start from Team Liquid, and that's important because we know Samsung is a late game monster. Piglet actually stole that blue buff. <laughs> he actually just stole that blue well, buff. Well, didn't you hear Piglet is the carry of the team to He said it himself, the confidence. We can't this really disagree. We can't no, really disagree. No. Piglet really is the big superstar carry on Team Liquid, and the guy who has to do well for them to win, especially the late game fights. And it's starting off well for him. He's got a lot of resource allocation over to him. Lots of ganks in the bottom lane from Rainover, helping him just farm up. Poor JJ continuing that harassment down in the bottom lane. Uh, once again, Rainover in the back lines of mid lane. Has been revealed by this ward, and Ambition will be invading here. Trying to find a resonating strike, connects onto Grump. Will he go for it? No, just a warning shot. And Rainover will finish off this Grump. That's ambition. Oh, thought he about, thinking it. about it. Yeah, he was like, like can on. I get in here with my spike? Maybe not. Top lane is the tanks are just trading away, but really the kill pressure is way earlier on into that lane. I feel and like right uh, now they just kind of, you know, hit each other a bunch of times and nothing really happens. Exactly. The, the observers here, they are baiting us sometimes to mention the top lane fights when we don't actually want to because we're so focused on the bottom side and then random. Ah, oh, top lane. I was hey. like, oh, they're fighting. Oh, actually, they're yeah. tanks, you know, whatever. We don't really care. I mean, the, the early game is interesting between Maokai and Nautilus because it is kill pressure. You saw both the top lanes almost kill each other. Uh, as Piglet almost gets killed by himself and poor JJ. We'll have to heal there in the bottom lane as well yeah. on top of that. I don't know if I agree on the interesting part. It's like, you know, like is watching paint dry into interesting? I, I don't yeah, really yeah. feel Pre so. Or pre six, pre six up until six is actually an interesting uh, matchup because you do get to <laughs> trade. You have some kill pressure. Uh, Maokai can kill you from sixty percent along a long lane. That's fair. Northless has a lot of damage with his ultimate if you hit all of your stuff. It's all about breaking Northless's shield. Listen, grab. Look, Deficio, I'm a top laner. I, I know. Talk about top I lane know. all day. I'm a simple man though. <laughs> I want to see two v two lanes instead. That's actually why the standard lane meta is really interesting to watch in the early game because there's so much fighting. You see the range support as well. The laning phase really matters so much, especially down bottom lane with the 2v2. That's why junglers are down here again. Ambition and Rainover following each other. Rainover's heading to CS. This is the focal point. Ambition jumping away. Rainover tunneling over the wall into the Dragon Pit crown, trying to corral oh. him in there. But it's Ambition who gets shot down from Piglet, the long range sniper. Rulo, meanwhile, running away from the big scary giant. Lolo, where's his hook at? Already used it. Gold blew over the wall, getting shot down by. Uh, uh, by Crown, Kuve. Hey, where's Crown going? He's looking to chase after Golden Blue. Poor JJ. He's taken out there by Rainover. A constant flurry of damage in from Piglet. Rainover looking for the dive in bot lane, but it's mid lane where the action's happening. Golden Blue was looking for this 1v1, and Crown running away, strutting away from Cassiopeia. And Team Liquid right now, Paul, they're out playing Samsung in these early fights here down the bottom lane. Ambition was a level down. Jumps onto Rainover, realizes he doesn't want to take that trade, and Lolo TPs in first. Very good reaction from him from the top lane. And Liquid are instantly just collapsing, going for these early trades, and it's really effective. Mid lane tower gonna take a lot of damage. Sadly, only a few minutes, but might have enough ambition. Just snipes the caster so it dies from the next tower shot, but tower goes down anyway. <laughs> Team Liquid with a big goal lead, and we said earlier. They have to be able to win the early game to take down Samsung because late game, we know Samsung is such a powerhouse. Even with their maybe not 100% top form here in the off season, they can beat most of the teams in the world in, in the late game. Liquid though, really showing up here early on and reacting to every single play.
But now to Fisher, there needs to be that step two. You can't just have step one, get ahead in the early game, alright? Alright, boys, we did it. Good job, let's go on to the next game. You actually have to finish it up. Because we saw Giants uh, yesterday in the semi final, or before the semi finals. Very clean game up until they forgot how to finish the game. Yeah, I feel like you just highlighted it. Every Western team's problem when they play a Korean team. They can, like, the Western teams can start well, they can be aggressive, they can pick up kills, they can get goal leads. And then when it comes to playing that flawless late game where you're like set up Baron, set up Proposition, Siege on turrets, get the late game team fights, it gets really hard to play without making any mistakes. And then a Korean top team can often punish you. It's what we have to see in this game here if Liquid can actually manage to close out games when they get advantages. Infernal Drake going down here, despite Liquid having won the last few trades, they're still getting pushed in, in the bottom lane and that's why Samsung has free entrance to this river where the dragon is and Liquid just had to recall, couldn't really do anything to stop it. So despite the one skirmishes, that's a big dragon. And now bottom wow. tower for Samsung. Give them an inch and they'll take a mile, a tower and a dragon over to Samsung now evening this game up just a little. So 1,000 gold advantage to Team Liquid. Lolo thinking about coming there into the middle lane, but Golden Glue is way far back. Let's take a look at some of the items that have been picked up. Double tier from Samsung, of course, means great skin, as we all know, to Fischio back from Season 4. Uh, mid lane, pretty much even CS across all lanes, apart from Kuve, who is bodying Lolo. Uh, Lolo, however, is 4-0 and because he's been roaming a lot and using that TP. So you can see there's a difference made up from that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to be okay with that trade if you're Lolo, getting the four kills and one assist for your team. Uh, TPing into fights a little bit earlier than Cuba has uh, actually done. And Cuba, funny enough, in the first game Samson played at this tournament, he just barely TP'd at all. He actually just stuck to his laning phase, didn't really do a whole lot else. Uh, definitely one of the most improved players on the Samsung lineup, especially judging from Worlds, where he was actually oh, one of yeah. the best performing top laners uh, at the entire tournament. Ambition getting caught. Flash, knock up, Ambition. He's on the miasma. but there's nowhere to run. A noxious blast will be enough to finish him off from Golden Blue. That will be a kill down there near the Dragon. The bait again. Talk about top lane, folks. I know. I was I was keeping the hype up. I was just like, all right, there's going to be another trade. I'll bring this up for the Fischio, and it'll be more hype. And uh, no, they're just hitting minions in the forehead. Still a very good picker here. Pick up here from Team Liquid, getting another kill. Very good pack of uh, Very, very good. We love it. We love it. Rainover showing up again. I feel like, uh, why, do we, why do we even highlight that? It's been like every single early game, Rainover has actually been on fire. Yep. Almost part of every single kill on Team Liquid. You come to expect it. I, I just really like the synergy we see between the Cassiopeia and the Rek'Sai, where Rainover knows if he flashes on the target, Golden Blue follows with my asthma, and the target can't flash away. Yeah. And they can actually take them down. They've done that twice now. And that's a very good sign for Team Liquid that the mid and jungle synergy is already there very early on because this roster was obviously put together very recently. This is still just the off-season. LCS has not started yet. So very cool to see Reyno and Golden Blue with some good synergy in these early skirmishes because they definitely have been surprising Crown a few times and now Ambition. And now, and now Ambition. Um, yeah, very impressed really by what Team Liquid have been able to do so far in this game and honestly in this tournament. We saw them uh, at the start when they faced down Giants and Giants took them out and it's just like, ah, Team Liquid, uh, Liquid not looking as good as we thought maybe they would with this yes. roster, but since then taking out Dark Passer, taking out Giants in very easy fashion. And now they're here up against Samsung with this massive gold lead. Yeah, actually, uh, I actually have a real hard time just judging the overall level of Team Liquid. Obviously, again, it's, it's in the offseason. It's too early to kind of say, are they good, are they bad or anything. But because Giants came in as one of the teams that I expected to be one of the weaker European teams with their roster, just looking at on paper, and when Liquid then lost the first game, and the, and the first game of the decider match was actually heavily in favor of Giants onto the big late game team fights where Liquid managed to come back, I was like, damn, it looked pretty rough, honestly, from Lego. Now to take on Samsung, you know, like such a yeah. such a powerhouse. So I was like, surely, Liquid shouldn't really have a chance. But at the same time, when you can play strong early games and kind of surprise a team like Samsung, who can be a little bit of a slow starter, you can get advantages. And then it's honestly just all about Liquid's ability to close out the game. And then they can beat Samsung. They can upset them. It's just not very likely if we judge these two rosters because one is a completely new one. Yeah. The other one went to the world final. <laughs> like. Again, we reiterate, but it's all about not activating Samsung's in rage mode. You need to make sure you don't get to the late game because if you do, very low likelihood you'll win the game. Samsung, in terms of macro, you even saw it earlier on into the game as well. 
even though they were so far down, they saw that push in the bottom lane, managed to take the dragon, managed to take the bottom lane tower, pretty much from nothing. Kuve walking into this fight here with ambition, knocking Golden Gloom right into the waiting hands of Crown. That'll be a fast kill over the Samsung. Meanwhile, Piglet lining up the shot with the ultimate. One more to go, but it's the row up, which is going to bring them right into the middle of Team Liquid, which secures Crown's death. Kuve cannot escape the jaws of Piglet. And our vision at Core JJ do not want to be here anymore. Ten kills to the Liquid lineup. Ruler looking for a kill on the backside. This is a two for one currently favor of Team Liquid. I never want to see a rise ulti into the enemy team when the enemy team has a Zyra. You're literally going to TP right into ulti and just get CC'd instantly. Rise is definitely not tank enough to do that. Samsung, such a good first engage, taking Ruh -roh. down Gold Blue, and now Vision getting caught. Void creature around the corner. Can the martial artist get away? We'll find out next time. Rain over. Last door to attack, not quite in range. And it will be enough to keep him alive. Ruler was there to save his ally once more. And that no kill resulting from that. But last team part was very funny. It was just like charging up the realm wolf with Kuven. It was like, where are we going? So went to same thing. Nope, into the enemy team. <laughs> Right into the enemy's AoE composition, <laughs> and you just die instantly. Another good reaction from Liquid after a very good engage. Like, I love this setup here from Samsung. Ambition and Cube setting up Golden Glue, and then just right into the Rune Prison. But Crown here, really well played. And then let's see, what is the decision here? They're obviously getting hit by the Jin ulti. They feel like they can fight 4v5, but Cube is super low. Yeah. And flies to Squishy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Man, that was one of the worst decisions I've seen in a like, very long time. <laughs> nope, did not want to get in that portal. Oh well, rest in peace. Kuve, that's not your fault, that death is not on you. Well he could have maybe not stepped into the Riot I, ulti. I mean if you're low health and crowns ulti like 58p and he's like a rise, you're just like, we're probably going back to our mid lane tower, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, god. Good. Good stuff here from Team Liquid, getting Inferno Drake as a spawn as well now. I like the, the build from Piglet, we've seen it more and more this tournament. The high edge rush on the Jin, like it's really high burst spec. Yeah. Where if you get one crit out of the three first auto attacks, that's great. But you know you got that fourth shot and you can just hammer away on these targets here. Cube, Lolo. Just trying to prepare each other and get each other low. Crown now Crown is here. Lane. He is the damage dealer. Maybe it's enough to secure a kill because Kuve is never going to take any damage from this tower. But Lolo, he knows how to hit walls. He knows how to hit those dredge lines and get away from danger. Uh, these top laners are not going to die. I don't think it's even worth going into the top lane. But there's a 4-0-3 top laner. Ambition into the pit. It was a little too early if he wanted to kill onto the dragon. Miasma once again, maybe securing a kill for Golden Blue. The answer will be a resounding yes. Infernal Drake, another kill for Team Liquid because Samsung right now are completely split on the map. Crown tried to maybe sacrifice the Infernal Drake for a kill on a top lane tower. He did get the tower, missed out on the kill, and then Ambition trying to be the hero with the blast cone and everything. Liquid just stopped DPS on the dragon. We're like, okay, I mean, I guess we're gonna pick up another free kill. Good response again, getting the tower. And classic. Western team versus Korean team, first game in a best of series where the Western team is doing well, they're picking up kills, giving the West hope. They're giving hope. Can Team Liquid continue the snowball? Can they actually close out the game? They have a very strong team fighting composition. The carries are getting to two and three items now. The next play is around Baron. If Liquid can set up vision properly, around the Baron and bait it and force Samsung into a bad fight, then Liquid can definitely close out the game. And that's what we have to see the next three, four minutes. Every single NA fan are kind of sitting being like, can we do it? Yeah. Can we finally close the game? A game one of the series. Will be important for momentum. This is a best of three here in the semifinals. Here at yeah, IA it will Young. be huge. So. Let's see if they can do it, putting themselves a match point. Samsung, meanwhile, have swapped their top lane to bot lane. And are looking to try and find something from Team Liquid if they put one step wrong. But Team Liquid currently seems to be doing pretty flawlessly. They've identified yep. the next objective. They've put wards around it. They have control wards. And I think it's important to highlight, uh, actually, let's uh, talk about that after, with the zoning ulti from uh, Piglet right here. Important thing. We mentioned at the start of the game was like, 
Samsung's comp was very focused on creating like picks, very mobile, could catch people out of position where Liquid was the very strong team fight. Oh, Crown, beautiful play. He snares Raynover, so Raynover can't knock him up and interrupt the ulti. Raynover even tried to flash for it, but Crown is staying at the edge of his ulti here, so beautiful escape from him. But again, Liquid's composition is built purely for 5 on 5 team fighting. So even late game, despite how good Samsung is as a team, Liquid definitely has the tools to win team fights. Not particularly getting hyped here as Lolo hooks Kube. Um, literally does no damage at the point where they will have these huge shields. Yeah, Liquid actually doesn't really want to play this game of uh, let's run around three lanes and try and catch Samsung. They actually just want to focus Baron. Yeah. They want to get multiple to control wards and just as I say they get three control wards here on the team and that's exactly what they need. You've got to clear that vision from the Baron area because then you also stop the Ryze from pushing on top side. Ryze has to sit top lane because he doesn't have a teleport so he can't go bot lane. So he can only split push top. He can't do that if he doesn't have any vision near the Baron because then he's just going to get ganked and he can't see people. So Liquid needs to just control that top side river. It should be the only objective right now. But they're kind of playing Samson's game now. They're, they're running around multiple lanes. They're taking 1v1s, 2v2s. They're trying to catch people with Jin ultis. And that is only in favor of Samson because these wards from the blue team has been on the Baron for the last few minutes and yep. they haven't been removed. Need to see a slight change of pace. I thought they were doing the right thing. They all grouped up. Then they started spacing out once more. Still trying to clear away these wards. Let's take a, another look at the items. 27 minutes into this game now. Quick uh, refresh. 3,000 gold advantage still to Team Liquid. And an Inferno apiece. So despite Samsung picking that one up earlier, Team Liquid had control over there. And completely random, but... Uh, Weird thing to look at, uh, people used to look at the spectator line. You see the items, uh, it's always lined to like the item closest to where the champion is, is the most expensive. <laughs> Except now, when you have an item that's upgraded from tier, it actually always goes behind all the other items. I noticed it yesterday, I was like, uh, that doesn't make any sense. Notice how the Muromana, the Seraphs, they're all behind the other items despite actually costing more. Really weird, huh? That's a great did you know fact of this year. It's, it's really weird because all the other cheapest items are always the first away huh. from the champion. Today I learned. Today you learned and it's completely useless. No one is going to benefit from it, but this is a fight. Not a useless Dragon's Raid. Pickle will have to flash away, not being followed by Ambition, who is locked up and taken down. Man, managed to get out of the fight. Crown, meanwhile, planking out all of this damage, but he has the Seraphs now. Shields on shields on shields. Greenover wants to re-engage while those shields are down, though. Golden Glue and Pikmin Ooh. encroaching forward, but Rainover almost taken out there. And once again, Liquid are just playing around the mid lane, nothing else. They're allowing Samsung to be aggressive. Yes, Liquid got the kill, but it was Ambition who got to start the fight and try and create that little catch for Samsung. Baron is still not prepared at all with any wards. Liquid though, getting that kill and Matt just staying alive because he was able to dodge around the overload skill shot from Ryze. I like this though from Team Liquid. Go straight for the Baron, start it. This is what you want to do. Force Samson to come and team fight you. Make them come to you. Ambition is still at base. He's only just exiting through the base gate now. Kuve is trying to contest. He's very tanky. He Try to get in range, but it is Golden Glue to secure the Baron here. Kuve into the backline. Ruler doing all the damage that he can do. Team Liquid still very good, but he instantly popped Crown. Ambition now into the fight. Great Dragon's Raid. And the Wombo combo now from Samsung is deadly. Lordo limping away from the battlefield. But Ruler will dive after him with the Arcane Shift. Kuve there to lock him up. Great time on Ambition's Q, keeping on top of Rainover. The Rainover actually very strong himself, so he'll jump away. But that was a four for one. Team Liquid with the Baron. Yeah, I can't really fault Liquid for actually starting the Baron. They had the kill. They knew they could try and rush it down with Cassiopeia. Had they been like again, just like one or two seconds faster, multiple members will actually escape. But sadly for them, they just couldn't finish it fast enough, and the rest of Samson was standing just outside. And the problem for Liquid is they're all stuck in the Baron pit. So even with the great ulti from Golden Blue, they can actually get out there and kill the carries. QV just sitting on this late game Maokai, unkillable in the Baron pit, and Samsung picks up all the kills. And it's what we talk about, how Liquid, Liquid were just not able to properly set up the map. So Samsung have been able to kind of sit and farm up, force Liquid to a team fight in the mid lane, and then also able to punish them after near the Baron. Still think it's 
difficult to fault Liquid for rushing down that Baron and thinking they could do it. Just a matter of seconds for them. And a few members could have flashed maybe over the walls. Yeah. Gold and blue. Rain over could have tunneled over. Poor fan. Yeah. Piglet, dark days for him, sat at the back of the pit. The only person he could hit was Kuve. He was like, oh, I'm doing 20 damage, 20 damage, 20 damage, 40 damage. <laughs> it was like, I'm not doing anything at all. Could not hit anyone. Uh, great hook from Lolo though, securing that kill on Crown. The only kill, in fact, of that fight for Team Liquid. They are still ahead in terms of gold, and they do have Baron on one person, I believe. So they could, yeah, it's on Rainover, so they could uh, group up. So. The hype for the minion waves you can buff. Yep, from one member only. No, no, Pauls. This Baron will not do a whole lot for Liquid. It will be. I'm being optimistic, okay? You are. I'm trying to get NA this first win of this best of three, which will give them a momentum. It'll be in great place. Great place. Now we get to see Samsung, though, being able to use Crown in multiple lanes because there is no teleport anyway from Cube, so he doesn't have any reason to sit bot lane necessarily. And Piglet and the rest of Team Liquid. Kind of moving between mid and bot lane, having to go back and defend, and they really wanted to set up for this dragon, but they're not allowed to because Samsung are just pulling them across the map. Raynor are looking for a potential engage. Liquid has to win this game through team fighting. They have to find the right opening. Lolo can be the man to engage, so can Raynor. But they need to find a proper position, and it's hard because you're getting pulled between two lanes. Hook landing onto Ambition could be the start of something good. Double knockout from Reyna, but he's not into Ruler, which is also good for him, but he'll turn away. Lolo still tanking up the front lines. Crown flanking from the sidelines. Pitlet is going to get almost deleted. Oh, no one can peel Crown away from him. Reyna attacking up three members. His sacrifice has been noted. Golden Glue also falling, but this is going disastrously wrong now for Team Liquid. Matt falls. Lolo the only one to remain. He's being snared up. The T1 logo on top of him, and he's taken down for the five and zero the ace for Samsung yeah we talked about it earlier Pulse the Western team they can get the early advantage they can get the goalie get some dragons but actually executing the late game is so difficult and now we hit this point here where Samsung is just this unstoppable force in the late game insane team fighting great flanking from Crown and they're going for the Nexus absolutely ridiculous just a couple minutes ago it looked like Team Liquid could do something but 32 minutes in one team white later and 13 to 13, 32 minutes. Samsung are right on the Nexus. Look at the finish this one off. Piglet's gonna try and pad a score before that one happens. But Samsung take out the Nexus and take game one in his better three series against Team Liquid. And Team Liquid will look back at this game. They will realize between the 22 to 25, 26 minute mark, they're like, what is the objective? It has to be the Baron Vision. Stop the Samsung from split pushing. Don't chase them around the map. Set up that big objective, try and force a fight around it. Sadly, for Team Liquid, they didn't do that. They al allowed all their wards to be there, so they just kind of chased Samsung around the map, and then suddenly, despite actually going for Baron later, it backfired, they didn't win the next team fight, and instantly, Samsung showing why they're one of the best teams in the world. You can see right now, Team Liquid having a discussion with their coach has not gone according to plan. You heard Pam Smithy earlier saying they were expecting a 3-0 in this best of three. Currently being 0-1.